Hello, high school parents. This is our 2020 COVID version of a parent orientation. So we are here to give you some information. I am Rogene Lowe, the high school principal. You will also hear from Jane Radford, our high school guidance counselor, and Dave Austin, who's our dean of students. Normally on an, an event like this, we would present some information and then allow you to uh, do the schedule simulation um, and meet the teachers in their classrooms or as a department. So we have a little bit different plan for that this year, and you will be getting that information. In the meantime, there are a few household items that I just want to cover this evening. After being in school a week, a little over a week actually, there are several things that I just want to call to your attention. The first one has to do with your student drivers. Um, uh, we are asking, and you probably know this, that they park in the West Church parking lot, actually as far west as they can. There have been a couple of us out there each morning so far just to help with that and monitor the parking, but it will be really helpful for us if they continue that. Next week, they will receive the annual parking permits, and those will be distributed during the senior capstone class, the junior college prep class, and sophomores in an English class. We will need those students to fill out that parent or excuse me, that parking permit, and get it registered with the high school. The dress code has been slightly changed this year. You can access the Parent Student Handbook from our school website. We encourage you to do that just to look at um, a few key things that have changed in the dress code. Mr. Ossenhus will talk a little bit about attendance at a later point, so I won't cover that now. I encourage you to start looking for the Friday newsletter that will come out of the high school office. That newsletter will include a lot of key events, calendar items, updates, links, different things that you as high school parents will want to know. I also want to talk a little bit about Canvas. This past summer, in a preparation for this school year, we researched several different learning management systems and as a collective group K-12 made the decision to to bring in Canvas as our learning management system for this year. Your students are busy working with Canvas. Their assignments, their videos, different class items are located on Canvas. Every high school teacher uh, is using Canvas to communicate different things with their students. You will also be receiving information about the parent access to Canvas soon. In the meantime, I encourage you to talk with your students and allow them to show you how they are using Canvas. This has replaced Google Classroom and is a very comprehensive learning management system that I think eventually you will come to love and appreciate. We will continue to use RenWeb to monitor attendance, to track grades, and to handle our student transcripts. The Canvas and RenWeb do mesh together, and we are in the process right now of connecting the two as far as grading. Please, again, watch for more information on Canvas. Uh, we have added some new staff this year. I look forward to you having a chance to see them on video and just get familiar with some of them. We have a second part-time guidance counselor this year, Shay Howard, who will be working predominantly with ninth and 10th graders. And as the year moves forward, we'll begin to work with them more and more all the time. She is also working with students who have learning accommodations and is in charge of that area. And then finally, she is also one of two people herself and Dave Ossenhus, who are co-leading the full-time RCSV online school program. So if you have questions about that, you can contact Shay Howard or Mr. Ossenhus. I want to also talk just a little bit about the university track model. In an earlier video, Dr. Eshelman referenced the whole idea of what we call or will call Cougar Academy. 
And the, the idea behind the Cougar Academy is to really allow students to connect to the real world, to be able to explore vocations and careers in, in a more positive way, and to also uh, cater to their interests and their passions. With that in mind, we will begin talking more about Cougar Academy. We will start providing some links of information. And even in second semester, we are looking for a, an, an honors college track program, or excuse me, actually an honors college prep program or class that will really begin to work with juniors to explore shadowing options to do career and aptitude testing and just things that we are moving toward as we look at the Cougar Academy. It is estimated that 75% of students, high school students, don't have a clue about their life calling or what they might be interested in after high school. And the whole idea of the Cougar Academy is to begin to work with them to help them better understand vocations and career tracks, help them understand that calling that God has on their life, help them explore passions and skills and interests, and allow them to take more electives, whether they are through RCS or th they are some through some of our third-party providers, to better understand some of those career opportunities. As I mentioned, we will also be adding aptitude testing and career interests into each grade level a little bit at a time. You will be receiving more information as the year progresses. Our goal is to hit this more intently for next fall of 2021 and begin to really shape this Cougar Academy. We look forward to it. We think it's very much in line with our Christian worldview and the idea that God has called them with purpose and plan in their lives. We will uh, also, as I mentioned, just provide uh, periodic links or information for you as parents to begin to better understand. Hopefully at some point we can have you here in person so that we can follow up on junior parent evenings, senior parent evenings, all of the things that we so love to have you in person and share with so that we can do those question and answer times. At this time, I am going to turn this over to the uh, individuals I met, Mrs. Radford, and also to Mr. Austin Hoos to cover some key things with you. We so appreciate you. Thank you for your incredible patience in the start of this year through the traffic and through all of the newness of things, new ways of doing things. We are so very blessed to be able to have students here every day and we are doing our best to provide for their uh, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual welfare so that we can continue to provide them what they need in the realm of education. Have a blessed day. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dave Austin, who's son the Dean of Students for the RCS High School. Just want to welcome you guys back to this back to school. Uh, this is my third year at RCS as the Dean, but it's my 14th year just being part of this family because my daughter started here as a preschooler and graduated last year. So I know a lot about what goes on at Res and I, what a blessing it is to get to work here with your children. And for me, my biggest, biggest thing I love to do is just to share Christ's love with them. And, you know, people here, oh, you're the Dean of Students, so they all, you know, they just assume that, wow, oh, you're the mean guy. <laughs> and, and I always tell kids when they come into my office, I'm not here to scream, yell at you. I am here to keep you accountable, but I want to build you up. You know, God's got so much more in store for us. And so many times you, we don't really realize just the gifts and talents that he's given to us. And so I'm always around. I love building relationships. And so I'm always in the hallways. I'm always in classrooms because I, I love getting to know your sons and daughters and what a blessing that is for me. So... So even though, you know, you might hear your kids say, oh, I got to go to Mr. Austinus's office, that doesn't mean that they're in trouble. I love just building relationships with them. Um, my biggest, th you know, this year is a little different, as you all know, just with the whole COVID thing and, you know, just with masks and just all the different rules that kids have to apply to this year. And I just encourage you to or maybe more than just encourage, I ask you to help us out 
you know, keep your kids accountable to you know, making sure they wear their mask at all times. Yes, do some of them think it's not necessary, but that's what we've been told we need to do to stay in school. So I appreciate it if you could just at home make sure you're just reinforcing what we're doing here. And, and I think that'll make this year a lot easier. Also, just with, you know, tardies and absences, you know, we at Res are so, you know, just the amount of time that gets lost just because of tardies or absence is huge. And, and so I encourage you to really look at the parent handbook to make sure that you know exactly, you know, how many tardies your children can have, how many absences they can have before things can roll downhill. And, you know, especially just with the absences, you know, we can't say it enough, you know, it's, it's so important for your kids to be in, in school. And, you know, this year at 10 absences, they can start losing credit for their classes. So just want you to really know, you know, the importance of being at school when it's time to be here. And, and again, I can't say it enough, you know, I'm here to, you know, enforce rules, but that's not my biggest job. My biggest job is to build relationships with your kids. All right, can't say it enough. You know, it's, it's a blessing to get to work at Res. It's a blessing to get, it, get to work with your children. And I can't say how important it is that parents, teachers, and the community, we all work together to make your child's education the best that it can be. Pray you guys have a blessed year and have a great night. Hi, I'm Jane Radford, and I'm the guidance counselor at the high school. Um, in my role that I have with the students, I meet with them to discover uh, their strengths, their desires, their passions, and listen to their dreams, and that's very important. I think sometimes in today's society, we don't take the time to listen to their hearts. And so I try to meet with all freshmen through seniors um, to get to know them better and to begin a path for their future, uh, their future success in whatever they think right now that they are interested in, whatever they choose, whatever they dream about. And that is the very beginning phase of college planning. And I'd like to uh, tell you that we have a halftime guidance counselor. Her name is Shay Howard. She's wonderful. And she's going to be working with the freshmen and sophomores. And I will do more of the juniors and seniors, although I still will meet with freshmen and sophomores uh, just so that they know I love them and care about them. Uh, one part of my job is to do schedules. We do that in the spring. Um, I focus very succinctly on designing schedules or developing schedules that will build their academic resume. In today's college application process, colleges and universities look very strongly at the degree of difficulty of their, of their applicants. And many times that will make the difference. They look at their schedules to see if they've taken any higher level classes. They'll look at their schedules to see if they've taken any AP classes or any dual credit classes. So those are very important. And that's something that I work diligently on to make sure that I build into your child's schedule enough of a challenging schedule or challenging classes that will enable them to be a good college candidate. So there are students that are not interested in going to college that want that have a vocational field they, they're desiring, then we work in that direction and I will try to get them classes that will, will fuel that passion that they have. I know that not everyone is college bound. We are a highly academic college prep school, but in that family, we have many students who are not interested in going to college, that want to do auto mechanics or hair design. And so whatever the case may be, I will help them find their way to reach their dreams and be successful and happy with who they are. I also discuss with them some very important factors such as volunteer work. Colleges want to see that the applicant has been a part of the community and trying to restore, trying to rebuild, trying to impact lives that perhaps need help. And so that's very much a part of their academic resume is that they need to have volunteer hours, community service hours, leadership roles in the extracurricular activities they're involved in, whether it's a sports team, a dance program, uh, speech and debate, drama, choir, band, they want to see how involved you are in the school and how involved you are in stepping forward as leaders. I also promote higher level classes for students who desire that level of work. We have AP classes. AP classes are run um, at a higher level of expected work. Uh, they go more in depth than your regular level classes 
And at the end of that AP class in May, they have to take an AP test. Colleges love AP because of AP classes because across the nation, they are all run according to the same academic standard. So what a senior learns or a junior learns in an AP class in New York, they're gonna be learning the same thing in Colorado. They all have the same standards and they have to be structured almost identically. We also offer dual credit classes and these are really more popular with the kids because there's no big test at the end that you have to pass to get college credit for the class. That's AP, you gotta pass the test to get college credit. But there's no cost to you in the AP class except the $100 fee at the end of the class to take the test. Dual credit classes, we run those through um, Colorado Christian University. We have some offerings of dual credit classes through Grand Canyon University, and we have dual credit classes through Ames and Front Range. So those are run just like a college level class. You do the work for one semester, whatever you get at the end of the semester after your final is what you get for a grade, same thing second semester. So there's no big test at the end of the year to decide whether or not you're gonna get college credit. If you get a C or above, you will have three hours of college credit. If you get a D, you get no college credit. Now the dual credit classes, for the most part, through Grand Canyon University and Colorado Christian, those have a $200 fee, and it could have gone up this year, I don't think it did, but it's right around a $200 to $220 fee attached to that. Uh, that's a great deal considering the cost of a college credit hour, which if you take a three or four hour class, or three credit class, four credit class, your bill is gonna be right about $1,000 for that one class. So keep in mind, $200 versus um, $800, $900, whatever, for the real cost of the class, it's a great buy. Most of our seniors graduate with anywhere from 18 to 36 college credit hours. So in essence, they've done their freshman year. And, um, and that's more often than not. The highest majority will graduate with that number of hours. The other type of classes we offer are honor classes. And those would require more work um, there's honors English, there's honors geometry, there's honors Spanish, there's honors geography, uh, speech and debate, just to mention a few. Those all will require or have a greater expectation of work and uh, the students really thrive in those classes. They're not for everybody, we know that, but they are available for the students who wanna stretch themselves and work a little harder. The last point I wanna emphasize about my job is that I'm your son or daughter's advocate. I am the student advocate many times they need a good listener, they need someone to care, they need someone to share some heartache with, and I'm the go-to person. Um, every student in this school that walks through my door, I have a personal relationship with, I know them by name, I care very much about them, not just their academic schedule, but more importantly, who they are as a person, how they're thriving in our school, how they're integrating into the school family, and how they feel about themselves, are they happy, what can I do to come alongside you as parents and your child and enable them to be more successful and at peace with who they are? Part of that is being their advocate. They can have a bad day at home, they could have a fight with you, they could have a fight with friends, they just didn't get work done. So students know that if they've had a, a, a night before where they couldn't get their work done, that if they come and talk to me in the morning and we talk about it, I will advocate for them with their teachers and give them some extra, extra time. Now, I can't always do it, but normally um, we can resolve it somehow. I want students to be successful more than anything in the world. I want them to be happy, and I want them to know that they have a voice with me. Um, as you well know, if you look back at your high school career, there's always drama. Sometimes having someone to discuss their heartaches with is important, uh, whether it's drama between friends, gossip they've heard at school, something that they saw on Snapchat, something that was said about them on Facebook, uh, whatever social media they're using uh, or have access to, things can write, students can write opinionated, hurtful words that can destroy anything I can do and build up, to build up their self-esteem and sometimes anything you as parents can do. I don't take that part lightly, I take it very seriously as we're not gonna have that at our school but I can't help them if I don't know it. And so I, I take it very personally when a child comes to me and says, I just need to talk. 
Uh, there's gossip going on around me. I've, I've heard these rumors. Um, I think so-and-so is mad at me. My boyfriend just broke up with me. Um, and, and I try to enable students by giving them the tools to manage through these difficult times and grow as a person, uh, to grow stronger in their faith and walk with the Lord, to understand how God sees them and how I see them and how you see them, and help them resolve these issues and learn to advocate for themselves, not just with their teachers, but with their friends, with you. Sometimes kids don't know how to talk to their parents. And so I try to be their very best advocate, not their friend, their advocate, who has their best interest at heart, wants them to be a part of our RCS family and thrive in this community. We love the Lord with all of our hearts. We love your students. And my job is to help them. Thank you very much. I want to thank you very much for being with us and for taking time to watch this video. If you have questions, and I'm sure you will, please reach out to our high school office. If it's in the realm of guidance counseling uh, for 9th, 10th, you can contact Mrs. Howard, 11th, 12th, Mrs. Radford. If it's things related to Cougar Academy, please reach out to me. Things related to perhaps the full-time RCS virtual school, reach out to Dave Ossenhus. Again, as I mentioned, we want to help you. And I know a lot of things that we brought up in this video probably only created more questions, but we're here to help you and assist you the best that we can. Thank you again. Good night.